Ninety-two, ninety-three, ninety-four. Oh, hey, welcome to the Atari Hacker Podcast. Look, we're kind of busy making our survival inventory here. I mean, you're probably not learning it here, but we're not really in the most fun part of the world history right now. And the economy is looking like trash. And we know a lot of you guys are probably wondering how the coronavirus crisis and the probably upcoming recession is going to affect the authority side model. So this week, Mark and I are going to be sharing what we think might happen with the current crisis we're going through. We'll talk about what might happen to authority sites in the short term and in the medium slash long term. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the Autority Hacker Podcast. Uh, in today's episode, I know I was having fun in the intro. Don't worry, I didn't buy all the toilet paper. I only have a little bit, like basically all I have behind me is all I have. I didn't take it away from too many people, etc. It's just the normal supply I have at home. Um, but today we are going to be, I'm going to say the date at which we're recording for once because it's quite important based on the topic. We're recording on the 17th of March, uh, 2020. So the topic we're going to be talking about today is what we think might happen to the authority site model based on the current crisis and uh, things will change a lot. So that's why I'm telling you the date and we're going to base everything we say on the information we have today. And today we're going to be with Mark. So how's it going, Mark? Still alive. <laughs> Still alive. Like it, 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 we're actually like more genuine when you ask that question these days. Um, but um, no, honestly, Mark and I are okay. Everything's going to be fine for most people that I believe are listening to this podcast. Don't panic. It's an it's interesting news cycle, but it's nothing to be crazy panicking about. Um, but the other other thing I just want to say before we get started is uh, we're not trying to give any kind of medical advice here. Uh, listen to whichever authorities, the CDC or NHS or whatever it is in your country that handles that side of things. This is not a medical podcast. We're not here to give life advice um, or medical advice, anything like this. The same way you don't come to us for medical advice, you don't go to the CDC for online marketing tips uh, and advice. So we are going to give you some online marketing tips based on what we think on the 17th of March 2020 uh, is going to happen slash is already happening. Uh, So, you know, don't sue us or misquote us out of context in five weeks when uh, a lot of stuff changes or whatever. When everything's um, salted and uh, yeah. So yeah, with that kind of out of the way, I think everyone listening is responsible enough to to listen to us, but not take everything we're saying as the absolute future prediction truth every time. Yes, let's get. We will into be it. wrong on a lot of things. Like let's be uh, uh, let's be honest. Um, but let's start let's start with the topic right away. I don't want to like spend too much on the intro. Um, let's start with the first point, which uh, is a pretty obvious one is if there is a recession, probably people will spend less money in the short term, at least you want to talk about that? Yeah. So the, this concept of velocity of money, it's not just about person a making less money because you know, they can't work or they have to stay at home or they're sick or whatever. It's like a network effect. So that person makes less money. So they're spending less they have less money to spend on discretionary things. And then the person who would normally get income from, from that person, uh, like that, that other business has, makes less money. So then they can af- can't afford to pay all their staff. So then their staff have less money and all this is big network effect. This is, this is what happens in a recession. Money stops flowing around the economy. Uh, and it causes a lot of problems. Anyone who's kind of overextended themselves um, or is kind of expecting growth, you know, most of the airlines in the world right now are are in this position. They don't have a whole heap of money saved up and they've bought all these expensive planes and uh, they're expecting to make a lot of money this, this spring, this summer, but they're not going to. And it's a huge, 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 huge problem. Even if you're like, well, how does that affect me? I'm an online business. Uh, I don't have real life customers or you know brick brick and mortar customers. Uh, I'm an authority site. My niche is doing quite well. Um, that's that's true, but you are still likely. Uh, we all are likely to be indirectly affected by that. So if you're a, a marketing agency and you have a cruise ship as a, a cruise ship agency as a uh, cruise ship, what do you we call it liner company? 
yeah. something like that as a client you will uh, they're probably not going to be spending money on online marketing at the moment they're going to be like getting rid of all their discretionary spend so the, they'll keep paying as many of their staff as they can keep keep paying their premises that they that they can but all the agencies all the freelancers all the kind of discretionary spend will will be cut massively um and even if that's not you, then that agency may come to you for like to, to us for online marketing tips and advice. They might may normally buy our course and now they, 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 they may not, normally yeah. have bought our course, but not anymore. Uh, so this is the kind of like network effect. And even if you don't, you're not feeling the pinch right now, um, it's likely to come uh, later uh, to, 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 to most of us. Um, well, there are a few exceptions, certain niches which are doing really, really well right now. You could probably imagine some of those. We'll talk about those um, a little bit later. Uh, if anyone's in, I mean, even if you're in the hand side, Gareth Dane, Gareth <laughs> yeah. Dane, the most lucky guy in the world, literally. Yeah. I mean, the it's, most lucky guy in the world. Started the niche in the preppy, the start in the prepping niche literally six months ago. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm just gonna start, and then, well, this happened, and uh, I guess, I mean, I don't think he has the keywords that. Um, people are looking for now is more like the real prepper stuff he's been writing about, but some of it might still be popular, I would say. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff is definitely getting more um, more attention and more focus right now. And yeah, revenue is going up. Um, what I will say as well, in terms of action you can take or, or something we did today, which I would encourage all businesses to do anyway, but it's if you're lazy expensive. like we've been for the last year, year and a half, um, this kind of situation is the kick up the ass you need to actually pull your finger out and get this done. Uh, and that is to run through all of your tools costs, <coughs> the kind of unnecessary spend that you have in your business. Online marketing companies, uh, w whether you're an agency or uh, you, you know you run a portfolio of sites or whatever you're doing, you always stack up these kind of recurring, recurring payment SaaS tools or PayPal annual payments for a certain plugin that you haven't used in four years, all this kind of stuff. It, it, it just start. It actually starts stacking up, and you might think, "Oh, it's a couple, a couple hundred bucks here or there." We went through it, and we we saved over a thousand dollars a month today just by going through that. So that's twelve thousand yep. dollars a year um, we've saved of you know stuff we didn't need, weren't going to use, uh, hadn't used in in years. So. Yeah, that's uh, I want to say as well, a lot of these things are paid through PayPal by a lot of people who are in the industry. And there's a screen in PayPal where you can see all your approved recurring payments. So it's like even if you have not documented that usually like I would get lazy about that because I haven't written down like where I'm subscribed and it's just a pain. I'm like, ah, it's like not worth making that whole list for like this, like these little payments, etc. But if you pay through PayPal, you can literally go in your approved payment page and you will see all of them and you can just cancel from paypal you don't have to log into each one of them and uh, you can save quite a bit of money actually that way and and some of them may have slightly different names so it may be the business's name which is different from the name of the plugin or the tool so just stick it in google uh and and ch double check what it is before you cancel so you don't cancel anything that you you didn't didn't mean to okay let's jump on to point two um there will be especially in the next few weeks i think there will be a massive increase in remote workers and people that are looking to work remotely um obviously a lot of people are getting confined at home right now um and i think also in terms of like remote working it's a massive world experiment where like a lot of people that maybe thought about it but never really did it companies that thought about maybe letting one day their employees doing it but haven't um actually let them do that and then as a result it's something that people will be more interested in looking more into etc and as a result it's going to i mean there's going to be a lot more available supply for people to work online uh even people looking at the pro blogger job board for example i would expect that this week there will be a lot more people that like read the job ads etc and with the increased supply what i probably expect to happen as well especially with looming financial crisis coming is uh cheaper prices as well so um you could probably get uh a, for example freelance writers you could find people that were not on the market a few weeks ago and you might find good writers for cheaper than you used to as well which might offset some of the lost revenue basically do you think say on the remote workers got to be a little yeah. bit careful on quality here you know you have a bunch of people coming in starting becoming writers who have never written before 
uh, for especially for like websites, they the quality of the content, the way they write, they might need uh, might need a bit of training here and there. Um, so yeah, just just think about that as well. Uh, the, what I will say is not just a short term thing because I think when people discover like a lot of people don't know that pro blogger or upwork exists so they're like well i have no idea how to get a job online uh i was i'm in a facebook group with some like pr people and there's a, a stylist uh who does like hair and makeup and stuff and all her business is dried up so she's looking to get some beauty fashion blogging kind of work uh, and i pointed her in the direction of pro blogger and, and upwork and she's like oh wow i had no idea this kind of stuff exists that's that's great once these people know that there is this whole online world here um when it comes when everything settles down again and hopefully everyone goes back to work or has the opportunity to go back to work some people may think well this i can do this online working thing why why am i commuting an hour and a half each day or whatever and they, they may they may stay here. So I, I think it will open up this this world to a lot more people in the long term as well. Yeah, I agree. And I think just culturally walking from home is going to be less. Uh, it's going to be much different from any other people because a lot of people will actually experience it for the first time with this current crisis because they have to stay home. So it's not going to feel as bad. And it's maybe some people will also enjoy that lifestyle and will want to spend more time with their kids, etc. Some people will definitely not want to see them anymore. Um, <laughs> but some people um, will definitely enjoy the lifestyle. And that means there will be more supply for uh, hopefully quality workers uh, as remote workers. And it's going to be something where we have more choice in terms of hiring and outsourcing. So it's I don't it's know probably if positive. this was uh, uh, fake news or whatever, but I, I heard that in China when they were people were coming out of the kind of lockdown periods, there was quite a spike in divorces. Uh, again, yeah, uh, that, that, that yeah. sounds like, the, like there's plausible, Sounds like a good right? BuzzFeed headline, you know? Yeah. Let's jump on to the number three uh, right away, which is Google will probably slow down updates. This one is like, you know, take it with a, grain, a pinch of salt, a grain of salt, whatever the expression is. Um, but there's a few things that uh, make me say that. The first one, is that well Google is affected like every other company by this crisis. It's harder for people to work together, probably projects get put together slower and probably it's not their highest priority right now. Maybe they're more worried about creating certain features that help the current health crisis and things like that rather than like reworking how the rankings work right now and so on. Um, the second thing is Google has a history of not rolling out updates at times, at like critical times. So um, for a while, I, I don't, I think for a while they were not rolling any updates up to a month before the holidays, for example, because they knew that, you know, big retailers like might be affected by that and it, it could really mess up with a lot of businesses. And I suspect that they might be doing something similar here where they're like, well, it's kind of a critical time for business. The last thing you want to do is just like change all the subs and mess things up even more. And I think uh, it could lead to a lot of bad PR for Google as well in a time where businesses need support and Google just essentially messing up, uh, like there could be bad PR spins to that. So for all these reasons, I do expect Google to not roll out as many strong updates as they have in the last two years, which is probably, I mean, it depends where your sites are, right? If you have been affected negatively by recent updates, it also probably means you're less likely to come back up uh, like with a big swing overnight. If you fix your site and it's like an algo up, like, um, it's not manual, then you can obviously go back up through the algorithm. But uh, I don't expect big swings, basically. That's that's what I would say. Um, any take on this one? Um, why do you think that uh, this is like, why do you think that they avoid doing it at these these times, like specifically? Um, I think it can really, again, bad PR and just overall like, uh, yeah, bad PR. Imagine, imagine like I'm a, I'm a reporter, right? Imagine the great story that would be is like economical recession is coming and Google finished off that business by rolling this update. And then I write that story in a newspaper and then Google gets extremely negative PR. You know, it's something that Trump would take and like your retweet and everything. It, it could go yeah. quite bad, you know? Um, so I think that PR angle is very dangerous in a time like this. And, um, and I think the best play for Google, especially when nobody's complaining about quality of search right now, is to just not do big changes. I'm not saying there won't be small changes, but it's, it's really like you don't want to be seen as the player that's helping the crisis. 
and it's pretty easy for them to be in that position if they roll out these big updates. And they, they are very careful of that, especially as their own shares are extremely volatile. So for that reason, I would say it, it would probably be a bad play from Google. Um, let's jump on to the next point, which is uh, Amazon payouts will be swinging a lot. So there's two news that came out today, actually, as we're recording this podcast. So this news might develop by the time we release that podcast. So, you know, take all of that with a grain of salt as well. Uh, but Amazon has been getting a lot more orders, which, you know, might be good for affiliates. But they've getting, been getting so many orders that they can't deliver them to people. And so as a result, they're hiring 100,000 new people to stop delivering and deal with, log with logistics, right? But while they're under pressure, they're only going to be focusing their warehouses on delivering medical supplies and first necessity products, which means if you have a paintball site, for example, well, not only will people not buy that many paintball guns anymore, but actually Amazon's not going to ship them for a while. And the payout on Amazon Associates only triggers when the item is shipped, not when it's purchased by the person, which, you know, it also could lead to order cancellations and things like that. And um, that means that in the short term, um, I think, yeah, it could affect Amazon quite a bit, actually. It could be quite negative if you're not in these niches that are getting that priority shipping that being said if you are re like cooking a lot of people who go to amazon and everyone starts buying all their daily daily shopping and everything they need day to day from amazon rather than from a supermarket then you also get commission from from those as That's well true. so it'd be interesting to see how that that, that it might out. it might uh, offset it actually like because people will like you know this um hand sanitizer stuff is like available on amazon for example which you know they're working really hard to like give to people that's the kind of stuff they're like well we're gonna focus a lot of logistics on this so that people get that and it reduces the crisis um like people might just go and like hold that and then you might actually get commissions on that instead of paintball guns for example that and and I could see Amazon understanding that and people open the paintball gun page, which they will probably still click on um, and then get like, oh, related products. And it shows the hand sanitizers or whatever people are buying or Amazon's delivering right now, which are, is going to make them money anyway. So um, and, and again, you know, when when people are forced into doing online shopping, people that don't normally do it, people that don't know you can buy a lot of groceries, a lot of stuff in most countries that you would buy from a supermarket from Amazon they may get into a habit of doing that more regularly. That's the so next that, point. That <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the next point. The next point is that um, we're actually going to see an increase of online shoppers versus offline shoppers, right? Um, and this is actually, it's a positive thing for um, auto sites. Obviously, we're, like, people are trying to avoid human contact right now. I'm seeing crazy scenes in France of like people like fighting to get into the grocery shop and like, it's crazy. Like when we tell people to stay far How away from How is that enjoy, avoiding human contact though? Yeah, it's, it's like absolutely nuts, but people still do it. Um, and it, but the thing is that a lot of people are smarter and a lot of people are trying to order online and get online deliveries. Um, and so that means that a lot of people who would not necessarily go and buy online. So like there's kind of like, you know, our generation is the generation that like has buying power and uh, grew up with the internet. So we're like the biggest online buyers, but like, you know, your grandma, uh, that definitely needs to avoid human contact right now. Um, your uncle that still has a Nokia 3610 uh, and you know, all these people that were not online shoppers now, it's kind of like they have to because it's more important. And so as a result, the, the population of people who buy stuff online is probably, going to, is probably going to grow massively from this crisis. And I don't think we'll see the effects in the short term in terms of revenue as authority size because as we said, there's a crisis coming, so the spend's going to decrease, and so it, it might offset that a bit. However, when things get better, it's actually a massive cultural change that's coming to a large portion of the population, which uh, has me expecting that when all of this is behind us, there will be a lot more revenue generated through online shops, etc., because of the new habits people will have built through that period of time where they had to do that and they discovered the convenience, they discovered the products they like on these shops, it's things like that, and they'll come back. And so uh, when their buying power goes back up and the economy goes better, then that could lead to sites actually generating quite a bit more income, uh, especially in niches 
that are addressing these populations that are not traditionally online shoppers. So like, as I said, older people, people who are not really technology friendly, etc. I think it's also a, a country thing as well. So con countries like the US is very, very, very sort of tech savvy. And a lot of people are very comfortable using credit cards, buying stuff online. But that's not actually the case in, in many countries. Like uh, in, in Germany, like a lot of people don't have yeah. a credit card. Uh, Still cash based, etc. Certain crazy. parts of Europe, like uh, in in Hungary, it's very common to have cash on delivery payments for for ordering yeah. things online. Um, so it's it's something to think about as well um, if you are kind of selling internationally um, or or targeting international visitors, as you should be um, if you are selling on Amazon, because the Amazon One Link uh, so functionality good, yeah. is basically free money. It what it redirect it automatically redirects. Of visitors from say France to Amazon.fr for the same product or a similar product you can tweak all the settings in it um, because if they come to Amazon.com US they wouldn't in most cases be able to buy the product you're you're recommending so make sure you have Amazon one link set up that's just a jet that's not a coronavirus thing that's just you should <laughs> be doing that in, in general yeah but I think yeah I think it's like we won't see it's gonna offset some of the losses initially and I think when things get better, it actually means that the ceiling for the size, the kind of size we're building is going to be higher. And that's interesting if you're like trying to build something in the long run and you're like, well, we understand it's going to be a tough period, but like actually this is exciting for the future, which uh, I, I very much want to balance this podcast. Not everything's negative. Yeah, the short term is not looking super great. Um, but in the long term, between the increase in remote uh, workers, between the increased online spend, etc., it might actually be a good thing for this industry. Um, you wanted to talk about different issues? Yeah, so I mean, it's probably like a Captain Obvious statement here, but like different niches are affected, are affected differently. Uh, we talked about Gareth Dane and the survival niche, like great, great niche to be in right now from, from a certain perspective. Um, the flip side of that, of course, is anyone who's in travel is like, I mean, nobody is traveling right now uh, or hardly anybody. So that's, yeah. that, that's really hurting. Also, any kind of like real life face to face interaction. So like conferences, right? Um, yeah. I was supposed to go to Traffic and Conversion Summit. I think it's one of the biggest online marketing conferences in the world. Uh, next week, I think it was supposed to be. That's obviously canceled, uh, as are a every conference for the foreseeable future. So if you're if, if that is your business, if you're running a conference, then that's a, it's a really, really, really tough position to, 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 to be in right now. We almost considered doing live events this year, actually. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know how that would have turned out, but yeah, it's, 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 it's not a good, so there's a big imbalance at the moment. Um, but, but realize that's, that's definitely a short term thing. So the businesses yeah. which can weather the storm who have significant or s sizable amounts of like reserves and uh, emergency funds and all that kind of stuff um they will get through this and things will get back to normal we're not going to be in this this is not like a 10-year outlook for how the world is is going to look like so uh, so far i mean i, I don't uh, i don't i haven't seen anyone say <laughs> See you that in 10 but, years. you know <laughs> yeah. so be like one of those uh things well everyone... in 10 years we're either back to normal or living in the world of mad max that's basically yeah. one of the two um Probably back to normal though. Uh, okay. Um, this will be like one of those uh, qu uh, quotes they put on the news on all these like historical <laughs> programs about the coronavirus. You know, like the Bill Clinton thing. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Like it's <laughs> always on like these kind of oh what happened in the 1990s kind of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's going to be an interesting time to look back at for sure. Let's talk about ads though. I think um, a lot of people are monetizing with ads, uh, and rightly so. Ads have been really good in the last few years with the growth of networks like Mediavine, like AdStrive, like Ezoic. Uh, they have done a really good job optimizing that and just ad spend for a lot of companies because the economy was growing so fast. A lot of that gross money was going into back into marketing to try to grow more, right? Because the market was hot. And so a lot of that money was in ad spend. And so w what's likely to happen is that, I mean, we've already seen that to be honest, like RPMs are dropping in, in ads and so RPMs means revenue per thousand visitors, basically, revenue per meal. And so, um, yeah, it's probably going to not make as much money. The good news is the progress that these platforms have made, like the Mediavine, the AdStrive, and the kind of like arbitrage they've done to like maximize your revenue per thousand uh, 
uh, visitors, etc., is still gonna be there, right? So it's not gonna go bad to like being really shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen people on that try making like 35 bucks per thousand visitors or more, like even like, so it's, it was a lot of money. I do think it's gonna drop quite a lot uh, in the short term, especially as, for example, travel advertisers are gone. And, you know, travel advertising or travel retargeting, for example, was a huge part of uh, ad buyers. And these guys, like for sure, they're cutting their ads right now. Yeah, th this um, is one of those discretionary spend things. So you, you can very quickly cut your ads, uh, ad budget, or ad spend without, you know, direct directly impacting your employees, triggering severance, like uh, getting out of long term contracts for buildings, all that kind of stuff, which is is more like a you have to pay it kind of cost. Yeah, the, the positive about us though, is that as we mentioned, there's going to be a larger population that uses online services and online w and websites more. So what's probably gonna happen is the RPMs are gonna go down. And right now I don't think you see the potential increase in traffic because everyone's just refreshing the sites about coronaviruses and you don't really see the traffic on your site. But like, you know, in a few months, people will just get tired of that. Or like even a few weeks, people will get tired of that and like revert back to things they're actually interested in and probably traffic is going to increase if they are forced to spend more time at home and they have access to the internet. And so that's when you will probably and be enjoying more traffic from like social media where people are going to spend more time uh, having maybe even more traffic from search, etc. And as a result, well, you'll probably get a lower RPM, but you might get a bit higher traffic. I do think the revenue is going to go down in the short term, like not, uh, not really bad because these platforms are doing a really good job re-optimizing and this technology is still here. But still, because people are spending less on ads, you're going to be making less money, which is unfortunate, but th there's not much to do. The good news is as soon as the economy uh, starts taking off again, I expect ad RPMs to just really climb back up really fast as well. So it's kind of like ads are very volatile. They can go down fast if things are going bad, they, they go back up quickly if things are going well, which, you know, when this virus is sorted, for example, all the travel advertisers will probably come back uh, quite quickly, you know? It's another thing as well that if you have a, an unoptimized ad layout or you're still using stock Google AdSense, oh, for yeah. example, then uh, and you've just been too lazy or, you know, not lazy, but prioritizing other things, uh, the nice way of saying it, uh, sometimes when you have a significant revenue drop like this, it can be a big motivator for you to actually like pay attention to this and maybe optimize that so your your revenue may be down if you're still using stock stock google adsense but if you decide that oh now is a good time to switch over to ad thrive then you can probably double your or triple your your income from from ads and get back to even ahead of of, of where where you were b before those are just arbitrary numbers by the way but okay so the next point is that site multiples might go down so site multiples when I say that I mean the price at which you might be able to sell your website to anyone that might want to buy it uh, site multiples have been increasing a lot in the past let's say three years I remember not that long ago there were 17 to 18 times um, monthly profit or something like this and now uh, you know they, they can be 30 to 40 times monthly profit. so it's been increasing a lot a lot of money has been poured into this market mostly from investors looking for even higher returns than you know, the market could offer them like through traditional investments like investment funds or real estate. Um, and they, honestly, it's been delivering. Like if you had a good operator, you could make quite a bit more money than you would make from an investment fund, for example. Um, so actually I was reading the article from Dom Wells from Monfolio. He wrote an article on like how a recession might affect the market. And his point was like, well, there might be a lot of panic sales from people that have websites and need money through recession. So uh, an excess of supply might reduce uh, the price, right? But he says, however, there's also people that are losing in the stock market right now that might be taking some money back and looking for other places to invest. And websites might be a place that people look at, especially in, with all the arguments we talked about, like increased number of people buying online, um, new habits of working remotely, all these things that get developed through this crisis. Um, it might be something that people are looking to invest in for the longer run. And so he, his conclusion was like, we're not sure. That's why I said they may be going down um, because it really depends on like how many people come to that conclusion that investing online is a good idea in the current market versus how many people need money right now because the economy is bad and have websites to sell. Basically, I think I, I 
quite strongly think that it's not necessarily going to be a good thing for a website price multiples generally in, in in any kind of recession especially one which is going to hit like really fast like like this yeah. one already is by the, by the way the term recession is it's different in different countries in the uk we define it as two successive quarters of negative uh, yeah. gdp growth i think it is yeah uh, uh, but that's fine. But you have to wait half a year to know if you're in a recession or, or, or not officially. So that's that, why we say likely recession since the beginning. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So the, I mean, for sure, the market is 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 kind of tanking right right now. Um, I, I I think that websites are one of these assets which a lot of people have, which it's quite easy to to offload, quite easy to sell. That it's quite frictionless. Mm -hmm. It's not like selling your home. You don't need to find another one. You don't. You, you know. You you gotta have somewhere to live. Uh, you can sell your website. You can start another one. You can do whatever. But you can you can get cash for it. I think a lot of people are going to be doing that. And I I don't think that a lot of people are going to be like. Um, spending lots of money buying them the smart people are because the smart people the value investors out there will have been sitting on a pile of cash for just this very moment and this is the time when they will um get rich okay i, I just have one, one more thing one more thing yeah the ninth one we didn't talk about we skipped over it uh live events conferences they are dead yep. for now uh, but i think there's going to be new ways of uh sharing information of of, of networking so i saw um uh, bb who's one of the i forget the uh, company she works for she's she's one of our fans but she runs like a really cool link building agency as well apologies uh i, I forget the name uh, she started this thing where she has like a zoom open and like yep. it's public and anyone can just go in for like a certain period of time i don't know if it's once a week or whatever and just come for a chat hang out talk talk shop like this is for digital marketers uh, so I think these kinds of concepts of like people r interacting more remotely, trying to kind of re replace the water cooler chat or replace the in-person networking may come, come into play more. I think we may see more uh, like conferences move to a digital model, uh, at least temporarily, where people are, uh, you know, presentations are being done remotely. People are sort of interacting I don't know, in the chat or in kind of some kind of like video hangout rooms. Uh, I've seen someone on my Facebook feed was was asking what cool board games you can play online remotely and trying to get some people together for that. So these kinds of dynamics will will change, I mean, the fabric of society. But it's it's interesting to see how that is going to play out in, uh, in, in digital marketing, I think. Yeah, I have a Zoom dinner on Thursday, actually. So let's see how that goes. Nice. Uh, <laughs> um, OK. As I said, let's close it now. Let's keep it short, but I want to make a proper conclusion. Basically, the conclusion is it's going to get worse, like pretty much everything else in the, in, in the economy right now. Like it's, I, uh, but unless you're selling hand sanitizer as your main business, things are going to get worse for a little bit. And uh, it was to be expected, a lot of people expected a downturn to some extent coming soon. We didn't know which shape it would take. Well, it took the shape of a sanitary crisis. And, um, but the good news is that actually th this crisis pushes people closer to our world, the world of doing things online, the world of buying things online, the, wor the world of working online. And that means that it will grow the market. And it is in the long term, I believe, quite hopeful for people who are in this industry. And I don't think it's the time to panic. However, you also have to understand that in the short term, you might not do as well as you have done in the past few quarters. And you should be expecting that at this point. I hope I'm wrong, um, but it's it's quite likely. So, yeah, so basically. Uh, I, I want to uh, put a little positive spin on the, this as well, because in most recessions, what happens is it's fairly certain what's going to happen in the in the short term once the initial shock kind of occurs like it's quite becomes quite mm -hmm. predictable it's the long-term future that becomes really kind of unpredictable whereas this one's kind of the other way around like we don't know what's going to happen next week or next month it's really unpredictable but in one year two year three years we can kind of predict things will most likely head head back to normal um by, around then or by then 
to some uh, extent there will still be some economical damage right it's like it, it's still gonna happen but like it's gonna get much closer to normal than like a proper financial crisis where financing is not available through banks etc cetera, etc cetera. it's a whole different story um i one thing i wanted to mention as well like kind of a, a thought for website builders is that for a long time we had visitors on our websites that were worth a lot of money right now um so it made sense to monetize them immediately with things like reviews etc cetera, etc cetera. however the worth of our visitors in the short term is probably going to be lower than what it will be in the long term. Therefore, I think the strategy of building audiences is going to become more valuable because you can capture people now and when they recover, they can spend more money. So I'm not saying change everything completely. I'm just leaving you with that thought that maybe it's worth doing things like starting to capture emails, building social media followings, just creating info content in your niche to build all these audiences, etc., cetera, um, so that when the economy resumes to where it is and when that higher opportunity that we mentioned because people are getting more online is here, you're in a stronger position to do even better at that point. So maybe making these more long-term investments, provided you can already pay the bills, provided you already making enough money to pay the bills, is the play right now for authority site builders. So um, do you have any final words for people? Yeah, uh, so this is not really an online marketing thing, but uh, there's a lot of things uh, unpredictable, a lot of kind of negativity and, and all that kind of stuff going on at the moment. Uh, my advice to you in this situation where there's anything can happen is control what you can control. So there's a lot of things going on which you have no control over, you can't impact, you can't improve, you can't prevent. Uh, focus on the things you can control in your business uh, with your audience with your website and that is kind of the best you can do given given the circumstances yeah okay so i'm gonna close it here but i'm gonna remind people that if you're on youtube we have a little subscribe button below we have a thumb up button as well so please don't hesitate to click this it really helps um you can also get a free training that we have put together on authorityhackertraining.com it's a two-hour training where we show you exactly how we start new authority sites if you want to take the opportunity of being at home to start a new site, it might be a good idea to check the free training. Uh, and if you still want to listen to the podcast on audio, we of course release it still there. So you can find it on Spotify. You can find it on iTunes. Not iTunes, Google. It's an Apple podcast now. Um, it's Google podcast as well. And we are on SoundCloud as well. So I hope you enjoy this podcast. We'll see you next week. Have a good week and be safe.